What's up everybody? Good afternoon. This is your boy Dewan. We're back with another video. It's Friday afternoon and um, I got off work right on time, but I had to make some routes, had to make some stops, uh, try to avoid traffic so I'll get home and I won't have to go back out to go anywhere. So I got a chance to eat dinner a little late and after eating dinner, this is the post meal walk. So, you know, once you do that post meal walk, you gotta uh, you gotta fire up that camera and uh, sh share what's on my mind. So this is what we're gonna get into today. Uh, what we got to talk about, man? So the cryptocurrency market, guys. If you're still in it, hold tight. Um, I think you're gonna be in for some surprises. We are well into the thick of this what third or fourth epoch for Bitcoin, which is basically its third or fourth having. Um, I don't know for sure which one it is, honestly, but uh, I just know that we're now emitting 3.15 or 3.125 Bitcoin roughly every 10 minutes as the amount that's being emitted in circulation has been cut in half. And so that is bringing about um, some supply shock as we notice that the amount of crypt, uh, Bitcoin, sorry, is being is dwindling on these exchanges and um, these uh, ETFs keep buying and munching away at the Bitcoin supply. Um, there's, but in the greater market, there's some things, there's some events to look forward to. I mean, I guess you have Ethereum. The, the, the U.S. is going to go forward with allowing the Ethereum ETFs to uh, be launched or something like that maybe in a month or this month i'm not too sure um i don't think that's a major market event but it is a market event nonetheless i think nothing's more major than what we're seeing with the uh inflation numbers that's uh, recently been reported so here in the u.s it comes to find out they say that the inflation is cooling off and uh, the market's cooling off uh, there was a little jump in unemployment numbers. There was a jump in job numbers, but I do argue that those jump in job numbers are probably with uh, low paying service sector type of jobs that aren't um, paying enough for people to keep up with the cost of living when it comes to rent, servicing their credit cards, taking care of their children, putting food on the table all at the same time. So we're seeing the unemployment going up. Inflation is still hot, but it's cooling. I guess the rate is slowing down for what they're saying. And um, you're hearing talks of the Fed or the federal chairman of the U.S. saying that you know there may uh, be um, no need to continue raising rates, and probably they're getting ready to start cutting. I mean, we're getting close to election. Um, we have a U.S. presidential election going on or, uh, that's about to, about to really heat up as we get into the fall season. And um, I think everything's going to come together to really, um, you know, just to shake out, just to shake out and see how this is going to affect uh, specifically Bitcoin. And I'm now I'm not going to any longer I'm not going to any longer say that it's about the crypto market it is really about bitcoin honestly the crypto market will benefit like the stock market probably but there's just some headwinds going on and this is what makes me really reinforce what i've usually said is uh bitcoin is the um safe haven asset it is the flight to safety in the words of larry fink from uh blackrock this rally is way beyond the rumor. I think the, the rally today is about a flight to quality with all the, you know, all the issues around the Israeli war now, um, global terrorism. And I think there's this comes about because the U.S. Um, Congress failed to overturn a veto that Joe Biden uh, placed on a on uh, some measures that would control the way the U.S. SEC gives guidance on cryptocurrencies. As you know, the U.S. SEC has been pretty strong, um, some would say hostile, towards the greater cryptocurrency market outside of Bitcoin. 
through its approach of considering things as securities, finding these companies, having these companies go through checks, making sure that investors, U.S. investors are protected, which they're not wrong. I mean, if we look at the history of how some of these protocols and uh, these layer ones, these small cap coins, these obscure coins as, as a small governing body, how they have actually uh, wrecked a lot of people and put a little put a lot of people through damage uh, financially. And um, I understand at the same time, there's a there's a market of people that want the freedom to be able to get wrecked. But uh that's just not how it works, I guess. I mean, if the stock market doesn't work like that, then uh, where do you expect the crypto market to work like that? So uh, the House failed to overturn the, uh, Joe Biden's veto on that. Therefore, the US SEC is probably going to crank it up a notch and continue to run wild as far as trying to crack down on the bad actors. Uh, what? Uh, Gary Gensler would consider to be the uh, the industry that's rife with with fraud or something like that. So uh, that's something to pay attention to. Is and the reason I say this is uh, I'm, I'm getting around to the point where I'm talking about Bitcoin being the flight to safety because again it secures you from um, dollar or currency instability, geopolitical issues, war, and the altcoin market no doubt it is terribly controlled um not only by a few who issue these currencies basically their foundation ceos a group of head devs dev developers but therefore they are essentially going to be um regulated directly by their government or whatever soil or headquarters that their company can be found on. So <clears throat> this is something that doesn't affect Bitcoin, obviously, because there is no founder. And, um, you know, since that's been accepted probably early on by the U.S. government and the U.S. SEC, that this is therefore they consider a commodity. It appears they consider Ethereum a commodity, but, well, actually, they didn't. The U.S. SEC did not consider Ethereum a commodity. They considered it security as well. But uh, who knows where this recent ETF uh, uh, approval uh, comes from. Uh, it could be from, we know it's from people in the government. We know it's from people that's being lobbied by these, uh, by all of these, I want to say, uh, founders and people who are able to print up tons and tons of tokens and print up tons and tons of their coins and just hand them out to lobbyists so they'll able to buy them off and uh makes sense though if enough of these guys rally behind ethereum they know that that kind of opens the door for everything else but uh since the us SEC is back on the block uh it's hard to say right it's hard to say um how this is going to play out this is very weird for the market overall but for bitcoin i don't see no other place to go honestly it just looks like it's just that place to be other than that um you know everybody just stay tight i mean um if you believe in your coin if you believe in your digital asset then stick around um if you're looking for something that's a little bit above the above the fray if you're looking to fly above the fray i would say consider looking at Consider looking at, uh, you know, Bitcoin, right? Consider focusing your portfolio around that asset. Anyways, that's just my opinion, guys. I'm just dropping in. I'm just taking a little light walk. It is the weekend. It's summertime. It's not easy out here from what I'm seeing. <laughs> but you got to, you know, you got to hustle, man. You got to, you really got to grind right now. This is for the strong at this point and you got to hold on to your assets continue to accumulate if you can if you are still able to make sure you get some non-kyc guys check out the link down below for hodlhodl.com get you some non-kyc bitcoin and you can trade it for whatever other assets that people are trading for on there digitally um non-kyc 
Also check out the links down below for different wallets that you may find useful. The coinkite.com store has a Bitcoin only cold card wallet. Trezor has, of course, uh, multi-coin wallets, but they have a new Bitcoin only Trezor 5, I believe. I got a link down there. Check out Trezor and also coin the cold wallet on coinkite.com. Lastly, need a good book, we want to just kind of cozy up or get it as a gift to family and friends to help them understand Bitcoin. There's a book I wrote about five years ago, uh, published it four years ago. Check it out, help you understand Bitcoin um, in an easy and uh, pretty simple, fun way. It's an ebook version down there too. I'm gonna get up out of here, I'm well over 10 minutes. I'm gonna get at y'all later, man. Peace.